Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. And thank you once again for joining us on this show. I just want to say uh, thank you to all the subscribers, to all the people that hit that like button, to all the people that do comment in the comment section. I wish we could have more of that because uh, I think there's a lot to talk about. I don't think we're right all the time. And certain people let me know that I'm wrong and I and I ask them to defend their position. And that's the whole point of it. Um, Brian, how you doing? Ah, speak for yourself. Somewhere in the <laughs> somewhere in the multiverse, there's always a version of me that's right. Just saying. Yay! <laughs> I tell you. Listen. Anyway. So as San Diego Comic Con 2022 came and went, and we got a lot of revelations and a lot of uh, things that came out that we're excited about um, the next few years, but. Um, after that, when Kevin Feige is making the rounds, we have to listen. We have to listen. He said some, he has said some things about certain um, titles that we've been waiting for. Fantastic Four, Avengers movies, and some, there has been some announcements about new directors for this series and that. And um, there's a lot going on. Brian, let's discuss the words of Kevin Feige. So for Fantastic Four, that's the beginning of phase six. Beginning of phase six. And he, there's, you know, there's been shows being done about this very topic about the Fantastic Four possibly not being an origin film, which we're fine with because we've seen it done a few times already we already know he's correct in saying that people know the basics about this story but how can we make it different so brian do you think we're gonna get 30 40 minutes of explanation about the fantastic four and how they came to be or we're gonna spend a lot less time and deliver a a, a, a story that um sort of feels that the audience already knows and they can pick up on a few things. What are your thoughts on how that's going to go? Yeah, I, I I think at this stage, depending on the hero or the villain, I'm totally fine with this as an approach. I think you can... The most egregious example of this to me is Bruce Wayne's parents being killed. It's like, we're good. We don't yeah. need to see, right? But... You can, you can flash back. You can use script to allude to key things that happened in that sequence and get the audience caught up on where you want them to be. So in the case of Fantastic Four, I probably would lean flashback. I bet you we do see whether it's a nightmare, whether it's a dream, whether it's a like something that shows you very quick cut what happened in space to give them the powers that they have. But I don't think you'll see the, hey, let's meet all four of them in their pre-fantastic phase and see how they grew up and became friends. And then went. we don't need that. We don't need an act one that's dedicated to that. Yeah. So I think if you see it, it is gonna be a five minute scene or less to kind of get you caught up. And it'll be placed at a moment where you need that flashback to propel your current story forward. I'm good with that. And I think the thing is gonna be a perfect vehicle to introduce a lot of uh, emotion in that the thing is a thing, like who wants to be called a thing, but you know, they make light of it. And certain things, certain relationships that he can't have with other people because how about different he is. That's why uh, one of the most important things about the Fantastic Four, Brian, I, I'm sure that you would agree, um, they've always been portrayed as superstars, like they, they, they're famous, you know? How is that going to translate on the film? Um, for me, I don't I don't know. How they, how do they make them dope? They got to be dope in order for us to see them as superstars as well. Um, and then I think, I think they are, but there's a, a food analogy. There is a Bravo TV element to them in the way they're written in the comics that I think the 2005 movie Interesting. 
but it's poorly written, but it tried, right? It tried to make them be public figures. It tried to show the squabbles and the family dynamic, but it, it, the script wasn't high level enough to get you to really buy in, I don't think. But I do think that's gonna be, I'd rather spend more time on that of like, you gotta get us comfortable with how these four individuals interact. And that's why I almost feel like the casting for this, you're not casting in a vacuum. You're casting almost as much how the four of them in a room work together as you are how any one of them kind of embodies the part. Because if the family dynamic isn't there, it's not going to work. Brian, I think what's, as you were talking about that, you, you said some key things there that sort of gave me the idea of the approach of how to do the Fantastic Four. And that's to do sort of make it look like, almost like a reality show or something like that. There's an element of that to how they're portrayed, for sure. They need to go that route. I think that's going to be very interesting um, visual on how they're able to pull that off. Because to th them seeing it in the movie, Brian, I don't know. Fantastic Four is a hard sell for me. Because not even the cartoons are that compelling to me. They've tried and tried, and, and they, they haven't been um that fantastic <laughs> and and there's certain episodes that are cool but it's the other characters that make it cool not them so your thoughts yeah and i think there there is baggage here i know it was a long time ago and i know it wasn't marvel but there is a difference between when you go back to the well to do a superman movie there there is this element of we all have seen Christopher Reeve Superman, Superman 2. It's one thing when like, you know the character has had a great film or a great moment and you're trying to recapture that and outdo it. It's kind of different when you've taken two swings at a franchise and just plain missed both times. Like, there, isn't, there isn't any great Fantastic Four incarnation to hold this up to. Like yeah. this is trying, you know, like Batman, we've seen a couple of great versions of Batman. So like when they come back 10 years from now, 20 years from now and do another Batman, people will accept it because they're like, look, Batman's given me lots of entertainment through the years. But the mm -hmm. Fantastic Four, you gotta, you gotta win people back and then win them all over again. And that's, a t and that's tough. And that's gonna be tough. Who knows if that played into John Watts' decision to back out and it's like, yo, this is going to be difficult. You're like, how do I make these guys popular? How, you know, how do I make a compelling story? Outside of the visuals, these guys have, people have to care about these guys at the same time in order to make this work. And I, I'm still on the, I, I'm waiting and excited to see what they do, Brian, but I, I, I go in with hesitation as to this being, uh, a successful film just because of the many iterations we've seen to uh and none of them being a success but i think that's what i, I don't know if they'll ever we'll get a behind the scenes story of what happened with john, with john watts on this but creatively there's a lot of room to differ on a project like this right you can differ on how they should be shown tonally right that's an easy area where the studio and the director might disagree. You could definitely disagree on casting. I could see the director saying like, I want these types of actors in this age range. You could see the studio saying, no, we want like, AM, like as much as they made it seem like, oh, he's tired because he's been doing these blockbusters. That certainly makes sense. And now he wants to do a little Star Wars show. Instead, he wants to work do like more of a children oriented, you know, kind of film. It's still in the back of my mind, I'm like, there's a decent chance there was some disagreement about exactly how to do this. Yeah. Well, that's why so far out there, 2026, right? Is it 2025, sorry. 2025, yeah. 2025. So we got some time. Um, and hopefully we get some more, I guess, progress on where it's going with perhaps some announcements at D23 um, of cast, well, I perhaps. Think, I, think you're getting the director. Director. I think you're okay. getting the director and the cast at D23. Okay. I do. I do. Depending, on, depending on the cast, Brian, do you get, do you feel like you can get a sense of tonally where it can go? 
Well, cast and director. So I actually think more from, in a weird way, I think more so from the cast than the director. So Marvel has become very, I don't know, they, they, they've become very prolific at telling you, they like to throw at you what movies inspire the movies they're doing. Like it's, it, you know, and actually the Russos were responsible for this. I'm convinced because when they, when they started with winter soldier, where they were like, this is like a seventies political thriller. And you know, there's a little bit of that to the movie, but when they started doing that, I feel like Marvel has done that with almost every one of their films since they're yeah. like, what is the historical movie we can use to try to sell you on it? So I have no doubt that the fantastic four, there will be some classic piece of cinema that they reference as like, this was our inspiration. But it will make like no sense if that may make in the context of a yeah. superhero movie. But what I'm actually interested in is if they bring the cast out and they do like a little panel discussion where they're all allowed to participate, I am curious to see if they have some instant chemistry. Yeah. Because like I could tell you, like in the in the old five movie, it's like, you know, Chris Evans, even back then, charismatic guy. But you know, young Guff, you know, young Guffrude, Jessica Alba, Chris Evans. Michael Chiklis, no chemistry between the four of them together. None. I, I actually enjoyed Chris Evans. He was he, he was hilarious to me. Chris He's charismatic. Right? He, yeah, his version of Johnny Storm was entertaining, but it kind of didn't really go with the other three of them. It was sort of awkward. Yeah. And the same thing, if, you know, like in the 2015 thing, it's like Miles Teller, charismatic actor. Michael B, charismatic actor. Kate Mara, Jamie Bell. Like individually, these are talented people. But collectively, there was no sense of community or family that I ever mm -hmm. felt with that group. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm kind of looking for. They put the four of them out there on stage and they start taking questions and bantering. How do they get along? That might give you a little clue as to how this might work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one, one thing I hope uh, they get right is Johnny Storm. Um, I like that kid from stranger things in the previous season he he died in the last episode he was max's brother the, okay i'm not up on stranger things so I, oh okay okay I, i'm not in the billions of people who have caught up with this yet, so. it's 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 i appreciate what the duffer brothers did um with that that show it was fantastic i think it was it was it was really really done well when when i watch something i don't really want to care about it they make me care about it because it was yeah. done so well, I'm like, wow. So I, I, big ups to them. But I, oh. I, do have to, I do have to raise this point though. There is mm -hmm. another element of it. So there's this element, there's the doom element, which we obviously talked about before. <laughs> there's a third element though, that we won't know until the trailers, but it's very topical to the Marvel discussion. The VFX better not be bad on this. Because oh, this crew, yeah. but this crew has a high, high risk, right? It's easy for the thing to look bad. It's easy for the Mr. Fantastic effects to look bad or Johnny Storm's physics as the flame to look bad or even Sue Storm, like how they do the invisible visibility. These are characters that with poor effects can go really sideways. So I, I think until we see- a Especially with the stretchy stuff, yeah. Yeah, right? I, I mean, so that's the one that could really distract you from from, from the movie if it's, if it's shoddy. Did, did you have a problem with the thing in- um either of the Fantastic Fours that we got? I mean, the thing in the first one looks pretty fake, I think. Chickless okay. suit or whatever they have him in, I'm not, I'm not overly impressed. We don't honestly have a great memory of Jamie Bell's thing either way. I think they kept it, it more in the dark, good. didn't they? It was it better? pretty good though. I, Did, it okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember either way a strong, a strong hate or dislike. Um, I don't know that I've ever been blown away by the Reed Richards effects yet. Um, yeah, like even Krasinski's version of it in the Illuminati. Like, I don't think we've seen one where I'm like, "Whoa, that's cool. That's a great use of his power." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, to me, that's a big element of this. So, yeah, that's our um, discussion on the Fantastic Four um, and what Kevin Kevin Feige has plans for that group, man. O no origin story, which I, I, it makes sense, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna get some flashbacks and some understanding of their power will be. Uh, uh, good, especially Reed, knowing what he knows. Because I was watching the Fantastic Four cartoon, and it's like 
every time he talks, nobody knows what he's talking about because he's just so so scientific about it, you know? So um, that's going to be very interesting. Brian, what did you think, before we wrap this up, what did you think of, first of all, do you care about Krasinski coming back? And if not, who else would you want to cast it at, in, in that role? There's still there's still some rumors lingering out there that he might be doing something along those lines. I still think it's fan service and done, but but we'll see. Do I care? I mean, I don't. I can live with it. I mean, it. it I mean, he's 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 a talented guy. I mean, I can live with it. I'm not you know, um, I'm not gonna like hate on it until I see the the broader performance. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, I would hope we get some you know better visuals than we got. Hope he's to be quite honest, granted, it'll be a 616 read, not an 838 read, but I hope 616 reads a little smarter than 838 read because yeah. 838 read didn't exactly impress me with yeah, his yeah. his plan to stop one. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully he's exactly. a little smarter than that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean I can I can live with it. The only reason I'm a little hesitant is again kind of this whole like Krasinski's not old. But this would strike me as another one of these franchises you want to you want to run with this family for you know over a decade, and like yeah. he, he's a super busy guy from a, as a director and an actor. So is, is he able to you know commit to being Reed Richards in a trio of Fantastic Four films plus two three Avengers films and over the yeah. course of a decade? You don't know that. I'm curious. So that makes me a little hesitant. I am almost wondering if they're gonna go a little bit younger um like younger like not younger. young not x-men young like not like high school young but like younger like maybe more toward the age range that the 2015 film was trying to get to um so i'm kind of curious if we if we do if we do see that i'll say this last thing in terms of what i'd like to see with, with regard to the characters and visually how they look um when they showed a uh, concept thought of Daniel Craig as Miss, as Reed Richards, I was impressed. Look it up, Daniel he's, Craig as Reed Richards. He's, he, well, he, he's, a, he's too yes, old. B, yes, he's yes, tough yes. to work with. He's not gonna yes. do. I, I know, I know, I know, yeah. I know. But I was very intrigued by the look. I've always looked at the Fantastic Four as older people, other than Johnny Storm, and Thing could be whomever. But Reed and 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 Sue, a little bit older, not yeah, as if, young. If they want non-origin story, something in some in the third, maybe in the thirties, not the twenties, yeah. would make yeah. sense. Yeah. But but yeah, so I think at some point we'll have to do like a, a full casting. I'm not. I haven't really kind of gone through it yet. But yeah. um, but uh, that was very the, I, then, yeah. That was the Rock's chance right there. The Rock that's the thing that's just like perfect he, but anyway <laughs> he would never do that though. he would never be the fourth bill guy yeah, would, yeah that would be like that's his problem that would be like yeah no that would become the thing and the not so fantastic three <laughs> that would be his version of, of it i he, i think he would play that character so perfect anyway that's our show for today um the fantastic four um that is on the comment section below what you guys think what kind of group we'll get Wh whom do you guys think should be read the thing sue um johnny storm and by the way johnny storm and spider-man are best friends so that's a very interesting thing um, um that could be seen in the future um but yeah let us know in the comment section below and we'll see you next time on the nerd gem report